Hey guys, it's the Crypto Cowboy. It's uh, Saturday morning here, Saturday noon actually at about 12.45 uh, Chicago time on the 12th of October and I want to do a quick, uh, just a small educational video about how to use the uh, Fib uh, Fibonacci uh, time tool uh, on uh, TradingView because I've had a couple of members asking me that into the, into the room here, into our um, Telegram room. And although I've used into my analysis, I use the uh, Motiveway software, which has uh, that tool incorporated and gives me the levels uh, kind of automatic when I do my, my wave counting. Uh, you can do that in trading view, which is fine because, you know, this tool is, is fairly simple to use. So I want to uh, show you how to do that. Uh, and, you know, we use the Fibonacci time, time tool to see how far uh, a wave um, it's, it's, it's likely to travel um, into a retracement or, um, you know, for example, into a rise. Um, and, you know, how does it relate with the previous wave, uh, for example? So, uh, you know, I'm taking a look at the chart of Bitcoin here. And um, you guys know, you know, from watching my other videos that uh, we are looking at two scenarios. One scenario is that this is actually a wave four. Um, in comparison with this wave two and not a wave two. So it's a wave four, one, two, three, four, and we're looking for a fifth wave. And the other alternate count that I follow is that this is a wave one and this is actually a wave two, which more and more I'm, I'm, I'm uh, inclined to believe that this is actually a two, just in terms of the duration and, and, uh, and the proportion with this wave uh, back here. Um, so if we wanted to do that, then we would take um, a very simple trend line. And you don't have to use this. This is just for me to give you a visual representation. But the wave one starts here and it goes all the way up there. And now we're looking to see how far this wave two, you know, is likely to travel. Uh, it's going to be here. It's going to be there, whatever. Right. So um, what we'll do is we'll go back here and then we'll pick up the um, trend based a FIB time tool that's here and you click on it <clears throat> and then you start over at the origin of wave one and you don't have to go um, you know at the bottom of where it starts because this doesn't matter with the price it matters the time so the day that this has happened that this happened so um, and this is a two-day chart so some of these candles each of these candles is a two-day but basically you know I'm looking where the candle has the low and then, uh, you know, I'm kind of pointing my, um, you know, my cross right down there and uh, I line up my vertical line with that price and I start there. So I go click and then I move to the right and I go to the top to the finish to where this wave one is finished. Uh, but I don't want to, you know, go over there because I don't want to have, you know, uh, just uh, multiple points up there. I'm just going to you know, pick anywhere over here. It doesn't matter as long as my vertical line lines up with the price. So I'm going to go and line it up up there. And that's the top of the wave one. All right. And now the tool automatically gives me um, the extension on time uh, based on Fibonacci numbers. And you see, if I move this around, um, this uh, modifies as well. So, and I'll show you, you know, basically, you know, why this is right now not important. So what I want to do is I want to leave this third point uh, at the same level as this wave one. Okay, so it could be here, here, it doesn't matter, or I can just drag it all the way up there, but I want to line it up because that's, that's the top of the wave one. So click there, okay? And now um, I have my points. So basically I have it from the origin of wave one to the end of wave one. This is hundred uh, percent. And now you can see how in terms of time uh, you have the Fibonacci level split in here, the Fibonacci times. So, for example, um, 61, 0.618 uh, percentage of this move traveled up here comes in uh, on October 24th. All right. So this is a very common Fibonacci relationship. So if the market um, wants to still correct and retrace, this would be an ideal time an ideal place where the market uh, could bounce. That's why I have this uh, into my analysis as well, along with uh, wave counts in WXY. So this is 618. If this wave two travels um, the next level, which is 100%, 100% uh, distance travel in wave one, in wave two compared to wave one comes in at around January 5th, 
all right and then if we're going to 1618 um, then you go May 4th but you will never see such a, um, a large wave 2 uh, compare with wave 1 it would be totally totally out of proportion I'm not saying it's illegal uh, but it would be an extremely um, you know rare occurrence and you can play with this you can go into settings and then choose your um, I'm sorry let me just go here uh, you can go into settings and you choose the next level 1382 and it just pops on the chart um, you know 2382 but more you know a lot of times we're using just the 618 and the 1618 in, in uh, distance travel you can do the one oh, the 138 as well it's not um, it's not a problem if you do so um, this is how you use it when you just uh, look at the wave uh, compare uh, with the second wave, right? So this is basically the way you measure a distance between two uh, consecutive waves. And I'll show you how to do it when you do, for example, uh, three waves. So um, for right now, let's say that we're looking to see if we consider that this is actually a wave uh, four and not a wave two, then you know we have to use uh, three points. So you have basically, um, we're looking at this uh, wave two, and I want to see uh, how this wave four compares uh, with wave with this wave two right on here uh, in terms of time travel. Uh, so the way you do that, you go back, you pick up the tool, and then um, you basically go from uh, a distance traveled in wave two. So you start at the end of wave one, the original wave two. Okay, you go up here, and then you come uh, to this wave two. Okay, and now you wanted to see how far this travels in the wave four. So you just go and you line it up with the wave four, and um, I'm sorry, with the top of wave three, original of wave four, and then you see where we are uh, in time traveled here. So basically, um, I'm gonna make this a little wider so we can see. Okay, so this 100% uh, equality traveled uh, in wave four compared with wave two. Uh, if this would have ended up being a wave four um, and we would have gone higher from here at 100%, we would have, you know, more than likely started back here, uh, you know, at the 100% equality between wave two and wave one. And if I take this and I copy it, um, you will see that that's, I mean, this is basically, uh, it's because uh, we have a log scale, you know, it messes up with the thing, but these two, this one and this one are equal in times traveled. This line, blue line, and this blue line up here, that's 100%. Um, right now, we passed 200%. So this is two, which is 200. So distance travel in wave four compared with wave two, we've spent twice the time in wave four compared with this. Um, Another important level here, it's October 24th, which is the 2618, um, which is interesting because it matches uh, almost exactly with uh, this whole move actually starting back here, uh, going all the way to this wave three, um, compare to this um, drop down here. So you remember from the previous example, we measured wave two in relationship with wave one, and now I'm measuring wave four in relationship with wave two with this wave and we're getting the same date uh, October 24th so this could be a very important uh, point into the market but doesn't necessarily have to get there right this is and you know um, just so you guys know in uh, Elliott wave uh, world Elliott analysis uh, the time relationships are the least important uh, the pattern recognition uh, and the price uh, are the ones that matter the most so how far the price retraces and uh, what's the right look and what the waves, uh, you know, look in terms of uh, their relationship with the previous waves. Okay, but uh, this is this gives you a little bit, uh, you know, of a, another tool to use in your trading and just kind of, you know, think about, you know, how far these waves are supposed to travel because uh, if you have a disproportionate wave, and that's why you go complex. Let me just delete this here. Um, actually, no, let me leave it on. Um, um, that's that's how you go complex because what happens is if a move rises up uh, too quick too fast 
for example, let's say that this move from here, from uh, the bottom of wave two, all the way to the top of wave three, um, it was a very, very fast move. It's not enough for the market to correct just like this and then go back up higher, okay? It just doesn't, um, it, it didn't take enough time to correct and enough uh, um, rest. So that's why you go W, then you have an X, um, and then you drop back down. Uh, it wants to be proportionate uh, with the rise of this, uh, come back down, spend more time, and then these lines here give you um, give you an idea of where that might happen. You know, it's not always accurate, but uh, it works pretty well. Okay, so this is why um, this is why we're getting complex corrections because um, the time that you spend in the first correction is not enough, and then you have to go complex and correct some more. Right? And then you can use this basically between um, all the waves. You can do wave two versus one like I've done before. You can do travel wave three versus wave one. All you got to do is just play with these levels and then just, um, you know, pull the lines. If you want to see, like I said, if you want to see the relationship just between wave one and two, all you got to do is just go uh, from here to there and then put another line in the same, in the same uh, uh, level and consider it done. Uh, and then if you have three three points, then, you know, that's how you do it. Okay, you go, for example, you know, from one to two, and then you go to three, and that gives you automatically the fourth wave. All right, I hope I was pretty clear. I don't think this is uh, extremely complicated, but uh, if you don't, um, if, you, if, you, if you want me to give a few more examples, I can do that, um, you know, or, you know, play with it and see how you feel, and then let me know. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, if you like this and you want me to do more, um, you know, um, explanations like this with other stuff, um, just uh, let me know. All right. Give me some thumbs up and uh, come and visit us into the Telegram room. Thanks. Bye.